I quite like this spot that I've chosen. It's perfect. It's got my unused exercise equipment from five, six years ago. I probably haven't really worked out, like hardcore worked out, in probably three years. I've been running, that's it. I mean, I don't think I'm unattractive. I have a nice chin. <laughs> My body might not be so attractive, but it's decent. I mean, it's funny. You'd think I would be so happy with my life. And I mean, I, I kind of am. I don't have to get high. I don't have to drink. I don't have to worry about heaven or hell. I don't have to get psyched out on thoughts. But you know, as I'm looking at myself on this screen talking about whatever and whoever the fuck's listening, I'm noticing that I look like someone that would have their shit together when I'm out in the world living. Like, it's funny. It really is. People think I'm stoned because I'm so chill. People think I'm, you know, like, weird, which I am. <laughs> but people think, and you just gotta stop trying to think about what they're thinking about. Mind reading. I think that's a big part of why I I want to kill myself sometimes. It's definitely something hard to talk about. I don't think people really understand what it's like to be depressed and have mental problems. Like, I don't really think I'm crazy, but I'm definitely not normal, <sighs> and people like to remind me of that all the time. They like to make fun of me, they like to, you know, pretend like the joke's on me, you take me for granted. Um, everybody likes a scapegoat. But when you really want to just stop living, I think you hit such a deep place inside of you. And it's weird because you can, you can really hurt yourself if you keep going. It's like the band Nine Inch Nails. Like they, um, they had that album, The Downward Spiral. Well, that's what I think it feels like. And it's good. It's good that he took all that energy, all that sadness and depression, and he turned it into something that people could relate to. But sometimes relating to something sad can be a trigger and it makes you even more sad, and then you just want to die. And maybe it's suicidal ideation. Some people just have this desire to be dead, to just go to bed and wake up dead. I had that before I took care of my kitty cat, Otto, here. He pretty much is my, my, my child. <laughs> Like, if I died, who would take care of my auto? Nobody. My 
my friends. They probably put him away. You know? It's like... One of my ex-lovers said if I killed myself, he would definitely hate me. And that really stuck. That made me stop talking about suicide. It was like, oh, shit, I'm definitely selfish. I mean, I have a life, and I need to live it. And anybody that doesn't understand that about themselves, that they have this life that they were given, if you believe in God, they have this life that they need to live. I think it's really hard for people who get so low that they forget about the small things in life that make you happy, like eating a nice chocolate cake, <laughs> hugging your grandma, having a cat, having a, a lover. Waiting for your bands, well, not your bands, well, maybe your bands, I don't know, but waiting for your favorite band's new record. Think about it like this. If, if you kill yourself right now and your favorite band, like My Chemical Romance, that's a hot one right now. I mean, fuck, I thought they were never going to get back together. If I had killed myself in 2015 for whatever fuck reason I had, I would not be able to have seen the glorious return of one of my favorite bands. I mean, that right there should make you want to keep living. I mean, unless you just don't like that band, but you get my fucking point, asshole. <laughs> like, just fucking live. Wait for something good to happen. I guess that's hope. I mean, I honestly was so shocked by <laughs> that email when it said re reunion tour, and you're just looking at it like, what? And then all of a sudden, oh shit, one of my favorite bands is back. And now I can have a chance to actually fucking see them. Didn't happen with David Bowie. Never gonna happen with Prince. I'm never gonna see fucking Freddie Mercury. I'm never gonna get to see Michael Jackson. They were all people that I wanted to meet when I was eight and nine, when I was like in love with all of their music. They're fucking dead. I'm never going to get to see them. Chris Cornell. Chester. Lincoln Park guy. Like, did they kill themselves? I mean, I still listen to Audio Slave. I still listen to Given Up, one of my favorite songs ever by Lincoln Park and shadow of the day, shadow of the sun, or y you know, I'm getting them all mixed up. But if I had fucking killed myself when I wanted to, I would never have been able to discover such good music that keeps me motivated. Especially as a photographer, I use that sensationalism of these people that I will never get to ever meet 
now. And I just have to keep believing that, okay, who do I like now? Uh, Sharon Van, whatever her name is, the girl that does the song 17. Fucking love that song. Heard it, cried to it, realized, holy shit, I never would have discovered this if I had died. It's just, you can't, you just can't kill yourself. No matter how fucking hard it gets, you just can't kill yourself. You just have to keep fucking living. Because it's never going to get better once you're dead. And that's literally what I have to tell myself sometimes when I get into a point where I'm so sad and so depressed. And I just went out today and made some art, some photo work with my coworker that works with me at my awesome job that drains all my energy. <laughs> and I get to be creative. I, I get to literally take photos of people and make them happy. And it's so wonderful. Even though it's a corporation. That's all I want to do. Is make people happy through photography. Whether it be my own. Or working for my day job. Or whatever. But I'm at least making people happy. With something. Who would be running the, the store if I was dead? I mean, I don't know. I guess my coworkers would rise up and maybe they wouldn't really care. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Because I'm not going anywhere. But yeah, death. Death is a big thing. And you've got to learn how to get through it. I actually have a book. Death. It's a great book that helps people get through it. Um, yeah, a book about death, dying, and living through it all. Virtual reality. You know, and, and then you have. The Egyptians, the Book of the Dead, the ritual of preserving your life, your um, something. It's, it's something that scares me. So I'm not going to do it. I have a cat to take care of. My little Lada. I have to feed you. Entertain you. Because you entertain me. I have parents that would be devastated if I were dead. self articulate correctly because there's something off in my brain that I can't get past probably from the past affecting my future 
my present. Who knows? The stream of consciousness talking is going to wear me out, so I need to turn it off for tonight and just listen to some good old-fashioned music.